in the quiet, in the quiet, in the quiet, I see God, see God, I know. In the
Good morning, church. Um, you're very, very welcome today. Wow, it's been quite strange uh, waking up a lot earlier for church as well. I think that's definitely a one change. Um, but it's also uh, quite different actually coming to uh, my first time as well to, to corporate worship. Uh, and, you know, the guys are practicing just there. And I can really say uh, it was really beautiful. Uh, I really felt uh, so much more uh, when, when you're listening to live music. Uh, and I'm welcome to people on uh, Zoom or Facebook as well. Uh, also, you're very welcome. Uh, tuned in nice, nice, nice and early. early. Um, uh, and also, yeah, so you know, it was really nice to come back uh, to worship here, uh, seeing everyone behind uh, their usual self, uh, their masks and things, uh, with social distancing as well. So it's really nice, and, and hopefully uh, that you were able to take it all in, you know, because um, I think for us, uh, each, each has a once a month. Um, so uh, once a month rotation and things like that. So do, um, do uh, take, make the most of what we have uh, at corporate worship as well. Today is uh, Communion Sunday as well. So the guys who are at home, uh, I, if you have time now uh, and to get any of your notes, also to get uh, you prepared uh, your, the bread uh, and, the, and the, the wine as well. Uh, for the people here, you, uh, hopefully that you brought yours. Um, otherwise, you would just uh, have to spit this one out if you don't have it. Also, for uh, people who are uh, practicing before communion, that we do, uh, that, that we advise that you are baptized uh, for taking part of this. Um, so, yeah, so today we're going to have, we have some uh, Bible verses before we start. Yes. Uh, also... Also, being in for a few months, it's kind of it's kind of strange to talk to so many people at once. Uh, so do bear in mind, uh, bear bear with me as well. And also, when I'm reading out loud as well. So today, we're at verse is in Genesis 1:40, verse chapter 41, verse. Uh, I'm not going to read it all, so I'm just going to read um, part one to seven. Yeah. So it's about Pharaoh's dreams. Uh, so one to seven. When two years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile. When out in the river, there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the, ne- the reeds. After them, seven other cows, uh, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the river bank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek, fat cows. Uh, though, uh, then Pharaoh woke up. He, f- he fell asleep again, and he had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other grains of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy heads, full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up and it had been a dream. The next verse, we're going to slide up to uh, verse 40, if we can, 40 to 50. Yeah, so Joseph in charge of Egypt. Uh, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in the charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his singlet ring from his, ri- from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as a second in command. And people shouted before him, make way. Thus he put, he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. But without your word, no one will lift hand or or foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Sephet Tane and gave him as a daughter of the Potiphera, priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh's king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, and land produced plenty. Uh, jo- Joseph collected all the food pro- uh, produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain like the, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by a said daughter, Potiphera, priest of On. Uh, and that is the word for today. Um, yep. 
Yeah, next verse, slides. Yeah, okay, corporate worship. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Someone's having awesome corporate worship as well. So we need to get ours going as well. Let's go. All right, so first slide for corporate worship. Uh, yes, okay, so these are all the, the codes for, uh, for Zoom. I'm sure you all know them by heart by now and all the things, details that you need to it. People are in Zoom, you're very welcome. People are in Facebook as well. Uh, next one. Uh, yes, today, this is a special one. Uh, is it, no, sorry, this is a new one, sorry. Uh, it talks about, for the, uh, to everyone who's doing worship, uh, actually, no, who are coming to, uh, to worship must commit to people, uh, I or my family has not traveled or returned from abroad within the last 17, 14 days. So if you have been abroad somewhere apart from Ireland, uh, that, and you come here, hopefully that you uh, have uh, quarantined yourself for 14 days before you come to church and meet uh, brothers and sisters, no matter where you're coming from, it says. Um, so second one is you have no signs of fever. So if you have a temperature, uh, uh, check yourself out, uh, see if you have any signs of fever. And third one is if you feel unwell after attending the worship, notify the church immediately. Uh, yes, this is if you actually feel unwell, just, just let uh, people know. So then we can be cautious as well. And also uh, that we uh, are able to... Uh, um, you know, make other uh, decisions afterwards. And hopefully it's nothing too, too bad. But uh, yeah, next slide. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically, as you all know, this is the first time you're coming over here. You're starting to see uh, the new normal or the new norm, as people says. Uh, you can start seeing uh, different ways of entering the building, different ways of doing things. Uh, it's quite strange at first. It's quite new, yes. But uh, over time, uh, uh, you, you, you understand the drill. So basically coming in from the door, the main entrance here, and then there's only a one-way system and you exit, you exit uh, there. That's near exit. And then, what else? Uh, yes, that's exactly, yeah. Next slide. Uh, yes, so uh, the lovely uh, ushering team today has been uh, zapping everybody with their temperatures. Uh, hope everyone has been okay, that's why you're in. Uh, you are fully in, and then your hand sanitizer has been provided, uh, and body tempers are all checked as well. So if you need additional hand sanitizer or you want to change your, uh, your mask, just go and ask your, the usher is there, okay? Then they'll provide you one. Uh, yes, the, so this is the main door here and the fire exits here. If any happen things, everything that happens is to go to the fire exit, um, uh, and then all your seatings are here, yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyone want to go to the toilet, uh, the toilets are at the back. Uh, you have to go straight to the audit, uh, follow the, 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 the arrows and uh, right there. Yeah, next. All right, yes, awesome. So I'm going to invite the worship team to, uh, to, to lead us into worship. Good morning, everyone, our brothers and sisters, and those who are online as well. It is really strange, actually, to be standing here um, after not being able to come in to ask her for about, was it four months now, since March? Um, it's, it's been a really, really long time, and it is strange, I think. Um, but it's great that we are able to come back together and to meet together and to have corporate worship. Um, as Kevin said, I think next door is having a great time. So <laughs> hopefully we can um, all raise our voices and uh, sing together and, and pray um, to worship God together. Um, before we start, I just wanted to um, have, uh, do a little sharing. Um, yesterday, last night, um, when I was just trying to tidy up a few things, um, I found this um, booklet that um, it was actually a booklet that their brothers and sisters put together when we went to a mission trip in Paris back in 2006. I'm you know, probably showing my age right now. <laughs> um, this is actually a mission trip that we had uh, in 2006. And I was just reading through and I actually read back up my own uh, sharing <laughs> that I wrote because I actually almost forgotten it because it was so long ago. And I um, just wanted to read something really small. Um, so, um, but we were there, actually, we were in a few churches. Um, we were in um, two major churches. One is called Elam Church, and one is called Revival Church. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Probably not. But, um, you know, the situation there at that moment, it was very complicated. Um, one of the churches was actually in an underground uh, car park uh, facing a Buddhist temple. 
And that one, that church is actually one of the ones that really struck me the most. And like, I still remember the, the picture of what it looked like when I was there. And then one of the Sundays we had like a, an outreach event and, uh, you know, it was like combined by a few churches and our church took part of it as well. And um, I remember that, that day, <laughs> it was very weird. Um, my nose kept on bleeding and it was just bleeding out of control. And, uh, but I had a sketch to do and um, I was just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And uh, I just had no idea and nobody knew what to do and how to stop it. Um, but you know, the brothers and sisters came around me and actually prayed for me. And probably like one minute before I needed to step on that stage to do the sketch, my nose just stopped. And um, we went, and then we, we did the, the sketch. And you know, and there was a few brothers and sisters that um, committed their life to Christ. And I, what, what I remember the most was, um, just wrote it here, was. Um, Afterwards, when we, were, when we finished the service, the outreach event, um, we were tidying up when I left the stage. And then um, I saw this really old lady, and she was left on a wheelchair. And um, I went over to her uh, with my very limited Chinese at the time. And I just said to her that um, uh, God would really look after you and he would really be with you. And I just hope that God will continue to bless you and to be with you. And, and I hope she'll be able to find a church to go to and to continue her, her walk with Christ. And you know, this was the first time she's actually heard about Jesus. And um, there's so many people out there that haven't gotten to hear of Jesus yet, God yet. And um, you know, although she was on a wheelchair, I still remember at that time she actually stood up from her wheelchair and she actually haven't been standing on her feet for a really long time because um, she's been on a wheelchair for so long and she stood up and she came over to me and then she like she gave me a hug and um, that really really touched me and you know god will do a lot of things and god really gave her the strength and he was with her and he picked her up and, and gave her this greatest gift um, yeah, so um, although we've been in lockdown and although we haven't been able to meet one another for a long time, um, we were sharing a kids service yesterday as well. But, um, you know, we're, we're doing like a gospel team for four weeks. And yesterday we were sharing about um, like Jesus died for the deaths of our sin. This was the topic yesterday. And the week before we were talking about who Jesus is and he is our Messiah. And the challenge that we were giving the children yesterday was, what can we do now, now that we know Jesus, now that we know that he's our Messiah, he's our savior, what can we do now? Um, you know, because we've all been like stuck at home for so long. Um, what can we do? How can we actually share God's love to the people that we know, but we cannot physically meet? <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge, but I do want to encourage you all to continue to encourage um, and to care for those people um, around us. Um, I'm sure there's actually a lot and a lot of people who who really need that extra bit of comfort, a bit of care and a bit of love, especially those who are living alone or feeling a bit lonely. Um, so yeah, I hope that you can continue to care for your friends in school and college and in work as well. Yeah, so um, before I start, we just pray. Um, And Father God, I just want to um, give you thanks, Lord. Thank you for um, being with us for the past couple of months, Lord. Although um, times have been very different and our situations have been very um, different and challenging in many different ways, Lord. And Father, thank you for being so sovereign and thank you for being, um, for being there for us in our lives um, every single day, Lord. Thank you for um, watching over all of us and giving us this opportunity where we can meet this morning to come before you and to worship you and to hear your word, Lord. And Father, I just want to commit um, this morning's worship and service into your hands, Lord, and I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to uh, be within us um, this morning, Lord. And 
pray this in your most precious name of Jesus. Now let us all stand.
the AV team is still trying to get the lyrics up. Um, hope that we can um, continue to just put our focus back onto God. Um, if we don't know the lyrics, um, it's okay. We can um, we can close our eyes and we can meditate on the lyrics. It's been in song, um, and we know that uh, it's okay um, if we don't know the words um, because God doesn't look at um, the outside. He actually looks at our heart and He looks at um, where we are um, right now and what we are fixing our focus on. So if you know the next song, if you know it is well, you um, we can sing along. But if you don't, it's okay. You can um, you can listen to the lyrics, or you can close your eyes and continue to meditate um, on the Lord. ways and ruin knows your name um, everything that um, it's you lord um, you've created lord and you know us all um, and you even know the hairs that we have and everything um, 
that we do, Lord, you, you know it all, Lord. Um, Father, sometimes, um, sometimes when we don't get to um, come together with our brothers and sisters, we can feel that uh, it's very easy for us to kind of slack back and very easy for us to um, put our eyes on the things that we know we shouldn't be. Um, but we still want to thank you, Lord, for um, being omnipresent. Thank you for always being there. And thank you for um, living in us uh, and being with us all the time. Um, even though sometimes you may feel like it may feel that you're very far away, but we know that uh, you're not. We just need to um, put in a bit of effort <laughs> to come before you every day. And I need you to soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to open my eyes to see that you're shaping my heart. Truly, Lord. Definitely, we all we all need faith, Father, in you. Uh, we all need more of it as well. It's just something that we just can't get enough of, Father. 
you know, and our faith gets tested in, 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 in times of lows. You know, our faith gets tested when, when the, the, something happens, you know, and our faith is also restored by the same God. You know, and our faith is also strengthened by the same God. And I pray for brothers and sisters that if you are you're struggling with having faith in your life in, in some areas in some parts right now and i give you this moment i give you this moment to just give god the worries that you have in your life to give god the things that you don't are uncertain in your life to give god all the things that you may not that you may not think about and that in this moment that you can that you can speak to him and that you can tell him and ask him for faith in areas of your life that you need faith, because we all need faith. And our faith levels goes high, and then sometimes, you know, we, we lack of faith. Sometimes we lose faith. Sometimes we, we kind of struggle with, with just asking God for more faith. But God is asking you to approach him for faith. God is asking you to really ask him for it, because he wants to give it to you. But you need to open your heart to receive it. And at this moment, brothers and sisters, that I let you tell God how much faith that you want. That you tell God how much, how much faith that God will give you. Because he will give you abundance. Because if you're a child of God and a child asking a parent, God will give you so much more than what you've asked for. And the Bible says, you know, knock and you will seek. Ask and he will give. And faith was definitely something he would give you abundantly. No matter what happens today or tomorrow, church, that we have faith that God will take over, that God will be in control of everything in our lives. And I know it's quite scary because that's what faith is. It's actually going into the unknown, you know, quite blindsided, but knowing that God is in full control in all the things that we have. Continue to seek him, continue to ask him. As the uh, usher is, is going to pass on the, the offering bag, um, we will ask people to, to think about uh, things that they're going to offer to him. Uh, if you feel uncomfortable putting anything in the bag that you might feel that uh, you know, that if you don't feel uncomfortable, it's okay. You can always put it afterwards. We'll put it in an envelope or things like that. Uh, for people who are online, the options are still open for it to, to for offering online. Uh, details are always on. Uh, always ask a leader, things like that. Um, but the offering is, is, is what you offer to God. You know, what you want to give Him. That you prepare something in advance so then you can give Him the show as a token, to show is an appreciation of the things that you have uh, in your life and, and the things that he's blessed you with in your life. Lord, Father, you know, even myself, you know, I have a, you know, a lack of faith, you know, and I pray, Lord, that today in this moment, I ask you to, to give me more and more faith, to know you more, to seek you more, Father, um, and to trust you that you have our lives uh, in your hands. And I also pray that you to trust you that you are able to 
um, take what we offer to you, Father. And may you glorify and bless uh, and bless the Lord. Uh, may you give uh, us the wisdom to uh, to how to use uh, the offering that you have for us uh, to, to grow your kingdom. Uh, yeah, I pray, Lord, that, that we're able to um, that we're able to have a, a good time of fellowship. Uh, and I pray, Lord, that we're able to uh, have an open heart uh, to, to listen to the sermon that we have today uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, so, church, you may sit down. Um, just another notice is, uh, is that we, we follow kind of stricter precautions in terms of, uh, especially during this COVID environment, that we don't uh, want, uh, we don't recommend, or, uh, or we want people to keep their mask on all the time uh, when you're inside the buildings. Of course, uh, if you're outside of uh, the church uh, surroundings, you can feel free to do what you want. But uh, hopefully that uh, while you're inside of the, the church buildings that we uh, adhere to uh, the, the rules that, that we have set uh, for it as well. So uh, thank you again. Thank you for the AV team and the worship team as well. Uh, a lot of things go, uh, you know, unseen, you know, uh, but truly God definitely sees that and uh, he, he greatly rewards you in heaven. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to pass this on uh, to a time to... Uh, Elder Tommy. Morning. Morning, morning. It is good to be here. It's really good to be able to uh, preach live, so to speak, uh, live on site. I do some teaching for my college, and it's, it's much more difficult doing it online. You might think that, oh, I don't need to see people, etc. but I prefer to see people, because then I know what's going on, whether I teach makes sense. So I should thank you in advance for feedback, even if you look weird and looking at me weird and so on. Okay. Um, and of course, to welcome to everyone who is online. Um, and so, yes, I'm reminded that I need to split my attention into two. Let us start with a prayer. Let us start with a prayer. Um, before we go into God's word, that Father Lord, we acknowledge and know that you are sovereign. That means you are in control of every single thing in this world and in, this, in our lives. There's nothing that happens by accident or coincidence. There's nothing that happens, even if it's from impure motives and seeming accidents and so on. But God, you knew beforehand, and you allow sometimes for them to happen. And God, we thank you that as we trust in you being not just a flippant God or a God who doesn't care, but a God who cares deeply and very good not just to set out to get us, but because you care for us and you love us and want the very best for us, we trust in you to be totally in command. Like a great grand chess master, but not just only defeating opponents, that would apply to the devil, but a good chess master who also shows us to trust in you, to learn from you. So may these words of my mouth and this message of my heart be pleasing in your sight, my Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. Yeah, so finally I'm going back to the series of Joseph, and the title series is God the Grandmaster. And I refer to this because, like, I don't know about you guys, but I used to play chess. I still play chess. I'm supposed to play chess with a few friends. Um, you know, he, he can see your moves. There's nothing that you, 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 you're going to make a move on this piece and that piece, and he knows it. And in fact, he's still going to be able to get at you. Um, now, as I said, hopefully that's just you not opposing him, but you playing with him on his side and against the devil. But we're continuing the story of Joseph, which really is actually, as with all stories in the Bible, it's actually about God. In the book of Genesis, and you're very familiar with today's passage about dreams and so on, and interpretation of dreams, we do it in Sunday school very often. Really, this is a story, again, about God's sovereignty. It is about God being the main character and the main hero, as with the whole entire Bible. Just a quick recap, slide, that 
you know, it all starts with him, Joseph, getting a, you know, a colorful coat, and then he had two dreams in which his, the, you know, brothers then bow down, and then his brother, and probably his father, father and mother then bow, bow down, and so on. And envied by his brothers, he was stripped and thrown into a cistern to left to die. Later, sold as a slave because they said it's better to make money rather than him die. And then he became a leader of the master's household, but then accused of molesting his master's wife. So then from slave, he became a prisoner. And even in prison, again, two people then had two dreams. Two of Pharaoh's officials dreamt on the same night, um, and, and he helped them. Well, one was going to die anyway, and the other one was restored, but unfortunately forgotten very quickly again. And he remained in prison for two more years. <clears throat> and the last sermon then, I mentioned this concept, this understanding of crucibles of leadership. And I know not everyone's a leader and so on, et cetera, but crucibles in life means the tough things that happen to us in life, the difficult trials and challenges that happen in life that help us, refine us, shape us, mold us. And Joseph demonstrated that he survived and he's been through the crucibles of his leadership path or his personal growth by showing that he remained compassionate to the two officials who had dreams and he didn't just mumble and grumble. He just, he had compassion on them. He looked at them and saw that they were dismayed. And so he helped them by interpreting a dream. He gave credit to God and gave glory to God at all times. And he continued to trust in more, even if he was forgotten, even though it seems like now I should be able to get out of prison. But he didn't get out of prison. And so what can you do? He could only continue to trust. And now we'll see today's chapter that he's now not ready, not just to be a leader in a household or a prison, but an entire nation. But with more power comes more responsibility. And with more responsibility, more authority, we need ever more humility. And so how is it that we do this? How is it that God continues to put us in different positions, and I say, no, everyone's going to be second in command, or someone is your CEO, or president, or although some may be, who knows. Um, but how, as you grow in character and as a person, that God continues to mold our character with humility, with integrity, to allow us to take on the responsibilities that he gives us, no matter how wide or big or scope it is, in a way that will honor, glorify him. Yes. So this concept of second and fun, and for those of you who game, like me, or if you play army games, or if you understand, or you like to you know, uh, read about or watch things about history and, and warfare and so on, then obviously the commander in chief is the one person who's in charge. Second in command is obviously second in command. But it also applies to, say, for example, the vice president to the president, or the deputy principal to a principal, or to for example, the chief operating officer in the company reporting to the chief executive officer. And again, I'm aware that, you know, I'm not saying that everyone here is going to be a CEO, COO, and so on, and et cetera. But I think in all our lives, God does put us in charge of parts of other people's lives, at least, if not maybe a lot of it. Small groups, large groups, whatever the position, it doesn't matter. And we all share one commander. We have one chief executive, one king, and one commander-in-chief who is our God. And he invites us to be second in command with him in his kingdom, in his realm. Before we go, the final thing I'll say before we go to the passage is that, you see, I think sometimes we don't quite get it right. We say to God, and there are young people here and less young people in, online, but still young. Do we dream big? Do we aim for top positions? Or do we say, oh no, well, obviously I'm not going to be there. Who am I to be in that position and so on? But I think the focus of both are probably wrong. If God has called you to lead a large corporate company in a way which reveals and shows that you're capable because he has gifted you in administration and management and leadership and that you glorify him, then so be it. If he asks you to manage your household, especially with the guys here, one day if you get married and you're leading your household, so be it. If you're managing as a teacher for a class, then let that will be done as well. Because God is more interested, as I say, about our character, our 
being as a person. And today we'll see from Joseph how he models that after years of testing and trialing and hardship, that he really is able to take on responsibility without being arrogant, without being proud, without being obnoxious, without going into conflict. So Kevin has helped us already. Kevin has helped us already in reading a lot of the passages because this is a long passage today, so I'll just summarize. And I'm sorry, I didn't deliberately put on a cartoon kind of uh, picture because of thinking you guys are kids. It's only because it's free. Okay, that's it. So um, seven, seven cows which were fat versus seven, then followed by seven cows which are thin and scrawny, and the thin and scrawny one eats, eats a fat one. That's one dream. Next dream. Then the corns and the, the plants, which were big and bulky and delicious, and then followed by, again, the terrible ones. And so we read in verse 8 that when Pharaoh had these dreams, in the morning his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them these dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. And it's strange because in, in Egypt's days and Pharaoh, etc., they, they thought that Pharaoh was also like God. They just simply said, yeah, you must be God born here, and so on, etc. And he should be able to interpret dreams, but he wasn't able to interpret dreams. So they were really stuck. And then verse 9, ah, the cupbearer who finally comes back on scene. He said, today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with his servants, and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. And each of us had a dream that same night, each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. He told, we told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was impaled. Verse 14. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I heard it said of you that you, when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And can you guess what is Joseph's next response? Is Joseph like a person who was like, yeah, sure, I can. No problem. Or was he a person who was, because of all the hardships that he's been through, betrayed by his brothers, sold as slave, accused wrongly by his master, and then even in prison forgotten, they became bitter, and oh, he wanted to take revenge, or he wanted to prove himself. This is what hardships in life can, and very often we see, do to people. And again, I acknowledge everyone's young here, and those online are also young. And one thing, I one, one quote I remember, I can't remember which pastor who said it to me. One pastor said it to me. I can't remember even what age I was. But he said, as I grow in serving God or as a leader or whatever God calls me to be. Oh, I remember now. I think it's Pastor Daniel Chu. He said, just remember, Tommy, don't let your heart be hardened. Don't let our heart be hardened. Especially those who have gone through a little bit more in life who are a little bit older like me, you go through tough things in life. And many of you guys have also gone through lots of tough things, difficult things. And the uh, human, natural human self, we put up defenses and put up barriers and obstructions to safeguard us and ourselves in self-defense. And we harden our hearts. And the song just says, soften my heart, break my heart, Give me faith to trust in you that these things actually are just to refine us like the crucibles in which we can shed our impurities. Not to harden us and make us more like, or even some people say like porcupine or dillo and so on, etc. But rather to be people who have, because we've gone through the tough things in life, we actually understand other people's difficulties better. We understand other people's challenges better. We empathize, we care for them. Just as Joseph did to the two people who dreamt in prison. He cared for them knowing how much he has been through himself. So the first point is no bitterness, no revenge, 
because we can trust, he trusted that God knew, even if other people didn't. He knew that everything was in God's timing and in God's hands. Next verse. And so his response, as I said, instead of bitterness and revenge, is like this. I cannot do it, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Not so much the answer he desires, actually, really, a better way to interpret it is he'll give you an answer so that your mind can be settled. It might not be the answer you want, right? But it is an interpretation. And so he interprets. Let's go look at pictures again. And because there are many verses, I will summarize it for you. <clears throat> Basically, the seven fatties. Did you use fatties last night? Fat cows, fatties? No, yesterday afternoon, the exercise. Thing. Oh, no. The seven fat cows were seven years of great harvest, growth, and abundance in the land of Egypt. And then the seven thin cows, then seven years of severe famine, and so much so, and represented by a thin cow eating the big cow, that you won't remember the years of abundance. So your seven years of abundance, zap, gone. And the same for the sheaves, for the plants, and so on. That after the big ones, the small ones, the thin ones come, and no one can remember anything. And so then we go, that if we realize that, you know, Joseph was able to interpret them, and he says this. He says this in verse 25. <clears throat> the dream of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. What God is about to do. And verse 28. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do again. Verse 32. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God, and God will do it soon. There's, there's, you can't make it clearer. He says it three times, essentially. Two times, he says, directly, God, this is what God is about to do. This is what God is about to do. And it's been firmly decided by God. Have you ever tried to persuade God not to do something? I mean, do you ever talk to God like that? I do. Um, and I don't get very far. I, I say, please, God, please, please. Yeah, he's firmly decided to do something. Mind you, some people you know, may misinterpret it and think that God wants to just bring harm to Egypt or punish them or something. But that's not true, because if you think about it, if he just wanted to do that, he would just send a plague or just a famine straight off. But he actually gives them seven years of abundance first. Seven year, good years first before he gives them the bad years. So it's not so much about just God punishing out of willy-nilly and so on, et cetera, or angry. And sometimes we you know, misinterpret God as well. We just think that something bad happened is because God definitely punishing us. Not necessarily. God is simply speaking. Speaking to us. Even during COVID. God is simply speaking here to Pharaoh. Next slide. He shows that he has determined what he wants to do. He has decided, firmly decided, double dreams, what he's going to do. And it's not just punishment, as I said, because there's seven good years first, right? And he's revealing to Pharaoh what he's going to do by giving him two dreams. If it's only one, you go, maybe that was just a dream. But it was two dreams. I don't know about you, but if you had two dreams, take it seriously. Um, and he's revealed, and not only that, he didn't keep him in the dark and mysteriously, like, you know, oh, he sent you these dreams and, you know, um, and then you can guess what will happen. But he has provided, he has explained it. He's explained it. Meaning that he's made his message clear. And God is not in the business of keeping everything. Okay, there are many things that still remain mysterious. We still don't know why COVID is here and so on. Although, actually, there might be reasons. And, but very often he does explain, if you just pay attention, here... He has sent Joseph to explain it. What's the purpose? It's so that God will be known. It is entirely up to God what he's going to do, and then he reveals it, and he allows Joseph to explain it. And remember, you know, throughout the whole story and saga of Joseph, it started with dreams. It started with two dreams that Joseph had when he was younger, two dreams in prison, and now two dreams, as he comes out of prison, 
to the place where God wants him to be. There's a reason for everything. And God here is a merciful God who is just showing that he is in control. And if you trust in him, I'm showing you in advance what will happen. And if you trust in me, I can save you. Joseph being sent as a slave and then in prison and now in Pharaoh's palace, none of it by accident. And for the purpose that God himself will be known and be glorified. We read on verse 33. Now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. And he submit, submits a plan. He submits a proposal. Basically, it's 20% tax. 37, verse 37. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the spirit of God? Verse 39. Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You see, even Pharaoh, and last week, do you remember Elder Kevin Chu, um, you know, preaching and telling us about fearing God and how Moses went to Pharaoh and between the snake and the leprosy and the Nile and then later on more plagues, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and refused to listen to God's messenger then, which was Moses. Thankfully, this Pharaoh, 400 years prior to Moses, listened to God's current messenger, Joseph. And he listened. He recognized that there was truly a God, not the gods of Egypt and Ra and the Nile and Osiris and whoever you read about in mythology fascinating in some ways and ends up in games and so on. But here, here, he recognizes the true God. The one and only God, the capital G God, who is in this man, who has shown and made known all this to him. And that's why he puts him in charge. I mean, think about it. If you knew a person really, really, really was walking so close to God and really, really, really was you know, has the wisdom of God and knows God, don't you want to follow him? Don't you want to, I mean, we all say we want to know God. We all say we want to know God better. So for me, I search for people who I believe know God very well so that he or she can guide me. Or them as a couple. I look for people who are, you know, and that's whether that's live in person or whether that's through, you know, blogs and other sermons and so on. I want to hear them because God is using people like them to speak to us. And the end result of all this, and when he has put you know, you know, him in second in command, and only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Next slide. God is known. Eva shared just now very well that, you know, there's just so many people who don't know God. And there's so many people who are not yet Christians and who don't know God. Pharaoh didn't know God. The whole land of Egypt wouldn't have known God generally. And there are lots of people around us who do not know God. What can we do? How can we live? How can we take up our roles as second in command, answering to God, our commander in chief? so that we can make God known. Can people spot that the Holy Spirit is in us? Can people spot that God has given us faith, wisdom, and us other attributes, honesty, integrity, humility? As I say, thankfully, unlike the Pharaoh whom Moses spoke to, this Pharaoh was willing to listen. And he could see that Joseph was a man of God and his messenger. He could see that he, what he said was true. It, and it wasn't just a threat. If it was, God would have bothered with the first seven years of abundance. He just slayed them with giving in seven years in famine and without a plan to be saved. But he was merciful. And let's look at the pictures again one more time. For the next 10 verses that Kevin read, then basically Joseph explained what they should do. Joseph said, you know, that's... Um, 
you know, during this time, let's take all the food, uh, take, oh, sorry, a fifth of the food of whatever has been grown and crops and, so, uh, crops and so on, so that they can store them and in preparation for the times of famine. And in between, Pharaoh gave him his authority, which is symbolized by the signet ring, by a chariot, by a robe, gave him a wife, and so on. And you know, how long did it take for Joseph to get to where he was? You know how long it took for Joseph to get to where he was? At the beginning, verse, uh, chapter 37, Joseph was 17 when he had his first two dreams. And in verse 46, it's not there. Verse 46, he's now 30. Within a year, he was sent to Egypt, slave, then prisoner. We don't know how long as slave and how long as prisoner. But then another 12 years passed before he met the cupbearer and so on. And another two years passed before he ended up in, like I said, all in God's timing. All in God's timing. It's been a tough life for Joseph. But God is good, and Joseph knows it. Verse 51. He had a wife, so he had sons. Joseph named his first son, firstborn Manasseh, and said, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. Verse 52, the second son he named Ephraim and said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Joseph was not in denial that he had suffered. Joseph was not in denial that he had troubles. troubles. Joseph was not in denial that he had been hurt and in pain. But Joseph turns to God for comfort. Many people I see as a doctor, unfortunately, treat pain in other ways. Between numbing pain with alcohol or other toxic drugs, or even trying to harm themselves. Pain is real, and as life goes on, unfortunately, very often there's more of it. But let us, even more so, then rely on the mercy of God, the grace of God, to comfort us, to mold us, and to sustain us more and more, so that our reliance on him is ever increasing in a way which makes our faith unshakable. God comforts. Run to him. And just as we draw an end to this chapter, verse 56 and 57, we see that this is not just a story to restore Joseph back into a position of second in command. This is not just a story of, of, you know, of you know, him growing. This is a story where God actually is planning to save the entire world. When the famine, verse 56, when the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians. For the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And verse 57, and all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe everywhere. You see, God had used Jacob, his father's favoritism, and you might remember the very first sermon of the series, which is a dysfunctional family. There's favoritism here, there, left, right, and center, deception, and so on. He uses his favoritism. He uses Joseph's dreams. He uses his brother's envy and revenge. He uses their attempts to try to kill him off or to end up selling him. He uses... Um, his master, Potiphar's wife's false accusations. He uses the cupbearer and baker who had dreams, who happened to be in prison at the same time Joseph was in prison. 
and he used jo Pharaoh's dreams and Joseph being, inter being interpreted dreams to end up not just restoring Joseph, but sustaining the world even through the famine. And importantly, through this, and we'll see next week as well, Joseph's entire family, Jacob and sons and so on, 70 of them will end up in Egypt. And it's a fulfillment of a promise written back at his great-grandfather's time. God is a really masterful chess player. Really. Look at the next verse. Chapter 15. Chapter 15. Like, this is like, you know, 25 chapters ago, right? He said to his great-grandfather, Abraham, and when Abraham was asleep, right? So, okay, dreams or direct speaking similar enough. Then the Lord said to him, know for certain, for certain, it's definitely going to happen, that for 400 years, your descendants, so not you, but your descendants, will be strangers in a country, not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. God's time frame is totally different from ours. God's promises are never empty. God will do what he needs to do to bring about glory to himself. The only question is whether we are willing to receive commands from him and to trust and obey in his commands, in his instructions, in his revelation. And of course, ultimately, the person who fulfilled all this was Jesus, who was promised also from the time from Abraham to the rest of the Old Testament prophets. And actually, similarly, between the last prophet, Malachi, for 400 years, nothing happened, and then suddenly he appeared alongside John the Baptist. And Jesus, who being in God himself, allowed himself to submit to the Father and just take the role of second in command. So, God is inviting us today to do the same thing. For everyone here who is a Christian online and in, on site here, we will take the communion. And we acknowledge that regardless of whether we end up as a corporate leader, a politician, a vice principal, a teacher, a, you know, of whatever level, we actually truly have one person who is in command, who is our Lord, our King, our commander in chief. And all of us join in him to be second in command. Let us prepare our hearts for communion. And before we have the worship team up, I might remind you that the communion is for people who can profess, who can acknowledge, profess that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. That the bread is his body broken for us and we take it in remembrance of him. And the cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is his blood, for the forgiveness of our sins, and whenever we drink it, also in remembrance of him. So let us spend a bit of time quiet in prayer before we take the communion, and we will try to take it together, those online as well as those here together. But let us pray.
Lord for allowing himself, even though he was God and King, sitting on a throne in heaven, to come to earth and to allow himself to be second in command. And because he was obedient to the God the Father, even to death on the cross, he humbled himself. God exalted him to the highest place. And if he loves us so much, isn't he worth believing, trusting, and following? So Lord, we ask that you forgive us whenever we don't trust that you are fully in control. Forgive us for whenever, instead of trusting you and letting you take charge, we take matters into our own hands and try to be in control. Forgive us for whenever we react and respond with bitterness and anger, or we don't give credit where credit is due, which is to you, Lord, and we don't allow others to know you because of our own selfishness or because we simply don't want to. And as we find ourselves in circumstances we don't understand or comprehend, let us trust in you. Trust that you have it all figured out, even though I have it figured out. Or others have figured out. That you have determined and you have revealed and you'll explain someday, even if it's not in this life, you all things will be made clear in the life of God. And today, brothers and sisters, online and on site, let us and remember what Jesus has done for us. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the, cup, the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We thank the Lord for his forgiveness. stand as we end sing it one more time just to acknowledge that God is good and it is good that he is in control and that he is our commander in chief, our CEO our king, our principal our president it is good to be able to trust him and to know that we are second in command and let us then go forth into the world go forth this week in a way that will honor and glorify him. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Father God, and the fellowship, the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every single one of us this day, this week, forever and ever. Amen.
Father God, just want to give you thanks. Thank you for the message that um, you have brought to us through Elder Tech Tommy today, Lord. Father, we want to we'll continue to walk in faith and to walk in your ways. Um, not just today, not just this moment, but every day, Lord. Pray that you'll continue to um, be our anchor um, in times where we really need you, Lord, and that we continue to cast our faith and our trust in you, Lord. And thank you once again, Lord, for this morning where we can come uh, before you um, and to worship you and to praise you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, once again. And I pray this in your most precious name of Jesus. So for those who are, are still online, uh, I believe there's still tea service online. So if you want to join in through Zoom, you can join in through um, 320, 320, 3210. Yeah. Um. Thank you.